All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Norma Jacobs. Um, my Indian name is um, Guy Huanko. And Nantahioni Nige Shaute. Kayokono Nige Huetzode. I'm a wolf clan of the Cuban nation of the Haudenosaunee people. So I'm going to do a Thanksgiving address that we usually do every morning um, and before we go to sleep at night. And um, it's also included in our ceremonies that we open with uh, Thanksgiving. So it doesn't matter what time of the day is with their ceremony going on, then we're gonna open with the Thanksgiving address. So I'm gonna start um, and um, we always begin with, uh, uh, with the people and give thanks to the people and greet them in a good way. Um, they're important to us because we need people in order to have conversation. We need people to share our dreams and our hopes. Um, we need people to, um, you know, to expand our thinking um, and to share our dreams with. And so we give thanks to the people. And um, even though um, in some circumstance that we have death and that um, we still acknowledge that death and that, you know, even today would be um, a good day, even though we've had people who pass on. Uh, because they're continuing their journey back to the creator. So, um, you know, today um, is beautiful. And so um, the sun is shining. Um, and so we give a thanksgiving to um, all of the people, you know, who are gathered within our midst that we come in contact with, um, you know, just to share our medicine, speak to one another and to uplift each other in our spirits, whatever they may be. And so we give thanks for that. And we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we move our minds to She's our foundation. So um, we step off of her every day. And as we walk, we massage her body She's our foundation and was the first beginning of life. Uh, at one point, um, we had, there was no land and the turtle came up and was brought, brought soiled up by the, by the rest of the water animals and placed it on the turtle's back. And from there is where we began our life journey. Um, and uh, the sky woman, she landed on his back and um, she began to dance. And so the earth spread around on the turtle's back. And so now we have all of this um, great creation of North America. And uh, we give thanks for her for being our foundation and for us to be able to look to her for, for our thinking, for our you know, gratitude, uh, for life continuance. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we turn our, our minds to the medicines, Onokwacha, and uh, on our sustenance. And all of those uh, medicines and the, and the foods that we take into our body were meant to be um, an enhancement to our life. It fed our brain, it fed our bodies, and provided us with the nutrients that we needed to have a good, healthful life. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. And next we turn our minds to the, um, to the fruits, the hanging fruits, we call it. And so we start with a strawberry, which is the closest to the mother earth. And she's the one who brings the best medicine in the spring is to bring us those wild strawberries. We take those into our body and they cleanse us from the inside and they provide us with nutrients to so that we can operate at our fullest potential. And so we give thanks for those hanging fruits starting with the strawberry and it moves up the, up the, the levels to different levels because after the strawberries come and we give thanks for the strawberry, we go and gather them in the fields and sometimes they're very difficult to find because they're overrun with all of the leaves. And so our children have to go in and they, 
separate the leaves and they look for these wild strawberries. And when they find one and they say, oh, there's one and they're so happy and they spread some more leaves and there's some more. And so we're greeting them. They're coming one at a time, their leader, first of all. And they're coming into our midst to come and visit us and to bring us their messages from the creator again, to tell us about the renewal of life. And that, um, you know, we have all of these fruits that are coming in this direction. And so we take them home and we make our strawberries, uh, strawberry juice or strawberry pie or anything that we can make with strawberry. And so we mix them together and it feeds our families. And then they, with the families think, well, wouldn't it be nice if the community celebrated them? And so we take them to ceremony and we celebrate with them, we dance with them. You know, we talk with them and we emanate the way that they move in, in the fields as we dance. And then we, you know, everybody takes, brings a cupful or a half a cupful of berries because they're so hard to find. And some people are so lucky that they can fill a bowl full and they'll bring it to ceremony and we mix it into a pot of mush. And then we, we spend all of that out. But what they're doing is they're bringing medicine to the ceremony. And then after the mush is divided up in the strawberry juice, they're all taking part in that medicine and it's helping them to have a good life. It, it acknowledges and, and celebrates that movement in their bodies, you know, providing the nutrients that they need. And so we give thanks to the hanging fruits. And when the strawberry gets done its cycle, it'll go back into the fields and into the woods and it'll tell the rest of the berries come in this direction because this is what those human beings did for me. They celebrated me and honored me and brought me into their families. We met families, we met clans and we met nations. And so come in this direction and they'll celebrate you too. And so it goes on all the way up to the, um, the pears and the apples, the peaches, all of those elements, they're all hanging fruits. And we give honor and respect to them and celebrate them because they've come in our direction to come and visit us for a short time and to share their stories with us and their journey and how they, that how they arrived here on earth again. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we turn our minds to the to the forest, Krahidonia, the trees. There's there's different kind of trees everywhere, and they're all you know meant to have a purpose. They bring us our games, you know. We use them for lacrostics. We it brings us medicine through the maple and the introduction of sap, maple syrup and maple sugar. And there's many different kinds of trees that, um, you know, help us to fashion our bowls and our baskets, you know, and so we give thanks to those trees. And for us as Haudenosaunee people that we celebrate the white pine. And on top of that white pine sits the eagle. And that eagle has a purpose to be able to send messages out to the community when there's dysfunction. And so we give thanks to all of the trees, all of the forest, because also within the forest is all of these animals, the deer, the rabbits, you know, all kinds of animals that are running about. And we're so fortunate still today that we can still go out and hunt and we can fell those deers, you know, or some kind of animal that we can help to sustain our families to make sure that they're not hungry and to give, bring that good medicine for them. And so we give thanks for the forest for housing those animals. And we give thanks to, to the um, to forest as well for housing those birds because the birds build their nests within that forest. And they're always, you know, singing their beautiful songs first thing in the morning, they awaken us. You know, and if we feel sad that they're there to sing songs to uplift our minds and our spirits. And so we give thanks to 
the, the forest for housing the birds. And there are many varieties of birds and we learn many things from the birds about courting, about singing, about boundaries, you know, and how to build, how to feed your family, you know, and um, so we celebrate that and we give thanks for the forest for housing those birds. And in the springtime, the robin comes and he brings this fire, a renewal again for life, that life is going to begin and the earth is going to warm up, you know, the sun's going to come and warm the earth so that we can plant and begin that new process for life. And so we give thanks for that, for those birds and the many responsibilities they have because they all carry a different responsibility and they all have their own color and they all have their own song and their own dance that they bring. And so we celebrate that and we say, let it be that way in our minds. And then we think of, of the, you know, the game animals that wander about and we give thanks for those too, because when it, we go to our ceremony and our, our people are, are decorated with uh, the animal parts, the claws of the, you know, the dew claws of the deer, um, the bear claws from the bear, you know, and, and we decorate our regalia in that way, using the hides for our, our outfits. And so it shows that we're having that respect for those animals because we use every part of that animal to decorate. And we show in that way the, the hunting skills that we have. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we go to the water, Oneganos, and we give thanks for all of the water that, that covers the earth. You know, and uh, water is so important in the beginnings of life because without water, we wouldn't be able to survive. And so we give thanks for all of those bodies of water and their sacredness and the, their ability to cleanse and to purify, you know, whether it be our bodies or whether it be the earth. Um, but they have that power to, to be um, medicinal for all of us. And so we give thanks to all of the bodies of water that exist from the wells, uh, the water in the ditches, the little um, puddles of water after it rains, um, to the lakes and the rivers. And in the forest, we have um, puddles of water where medicine grows for our babies, you know, that we utilize to, to you know, cleanse the baby's eyes and to wash the baby with this medicine when it's born. And so we're, you know, we're looked after by all of these things that, that exist within our creation. And it, it comes from, you know, from the time of conception until the, the child is born. And then we use that medicine to, to help to help the baby flourish. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. <clears throat> then we turn our minds to the water animals. They're all there to help keep the waters clean and safe and drinkable, you know, so that we're able to take that, that um, the, the, the water animals, like we, we can trap them and we can use their furs, we can eat their meat that they have. You know, they bring us medicine always, you know, and they remind us of our beginnings of this walk on Turtle Island. And so we give thanks for all of the fish, the many different kinds of fish that exist and all of the animals, the beaver, the otter, the ermines, the, you know, all of those animals that swim in the water, you know, they're supposed to be, they have a responsibility to keep the waters clean. And so we give thanks for those animals because they're still there and they still help to do a mm. little bit of cleaning and they have to work harder nowadays because of all the things that are being dumped into the waters, you know, and it's making the water sick as well. So we give thanks for those animals who are still trying to do their best, you know, to help clean the water and to keep that riverbed safe for us. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Then we give thanks to the birds and the ones that we honor the, is the eagle because he sits on top of the tree of peace, the white pine. 
and and the eagle has its responsibility as well as i mentioned that it sends out a cry when it, when there's dysfunction in the community so that the people can gather and they can have this discussion and conversation about how to resolve the issues that are troubling in that community and so we say thank you to the eagle for still being there for us and reminding us of our responsibilities and so we say, let it be that way in our minds. And then we give thanks to the wind, the Yawawane, that the wind is always moving. And it too is a medicine, brings us messages, brings us about the, the changes in weather. You know, and we have many things that occur at those times and the weather is changing and, and becoming warm. And, you know, so we have certain games that we play at that time of the year but it's honoring that change and the, the, the coming of, of warmer weather. And so we give thanks to um, the air, you know, as it revolves around us and, and wraps us ever so kindly and gently with love that the creator has sent those messages to us. And so we say thank you to the air, the Yawawane, and let it be that way in our minds. Next, we give thanks to our grandfathers, the thunder, who come from the West. And um, they come and, and they, they come twice a year. Um, they come in the springtime and we, just not too long ago, we heard their voices across the country. You know, and, and they tell us to, to be aware because, you know, the storms are coming to clean the earth. That's their responsibility is to come and to cleanse the earth and wash all away those negative things that have gathered over the winter. You know, the illnesses, the, you know, all of the debris, the, you know, all of the things that created, you know, or could create illness. So they come and they cleanse the earth so that we can have that safety and that health. And so we give thanks to those grandfathers and we say, let it be that way in our minds. Along with the grandfathers come the lightning and the lightning is, you know, strikes the earth because it's time to wake her up, you know, and they say that the lightning represents the women um, and the thunder is the male. And so when we talk about the, that relationship between the male and the female, that is so sacred and they honor each other in their responsibility that they're, when they're in that balance together, that they have the ability to create life. And that life comes in this in the form of raindrops. And so after the thunder and the lightning are coming together, and then shortly after that, the rain comes, and those are our babies that are born. And so we give thanks for that relationship and that reminder of, of how relationships are to be within creation. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we give thanks to the sun. Um, because the sun is known as our elder brother. And they it comes in the daylight. It's an orb of light that brings that brightness and that warmth. And so we celebrate that and, and uh, you know, give honor that the sun, our eldest brother, is still doing his responsibility, you know, to bring forth that light and that warmth so that we can plant and we can, again, help our families to flourish because they have the sustenance when it grows, you know, that they've had the energy to plant and to harvest, you know, to nurture through its time. And so we give thanks for the sun and we say, let it be that way in our minds. Next, we give thanks to their grandmother. So he caught when he dog, it's, it's um, a nighttime orb of light. She's our grandmother and she, she knows everything about us because she's always been there from the beginning. She knows um, our stories, you know. Uh, she watches us and she determines the tides of the ocean and she determines the time of our birth of her children. Uh, she's a powerful woman. And I've heard that, uh, you know, uh, when they talk about the moon that she's a lady of the night and that she has all of these beautiful jewels, the stars that decorate her outfit, 
you know, and, and she's, you know, so beautiful as she comes to that full fullness in her life. And so we give thanks to that um, Grandmother Moon for honoring us still with watching the tides of the ocean and still bringing our babies, you know, to, to come and have this birth and to be born into this earth walk. And so we give thanks for the Grandmother Moon and we say, let it be that way in our minds. And next we give thanks to the four sacred beings because they're, our, they're always working above our minds, above our heads. And they tell us, um, you know, to really think about our decision-making because we can make good decisions or we can make bad decisions. And who will they affect? It's not just going to affect me, but it's going to affect people around me, in my family, in my clan, in my nation, in the world. You know, because um, whatever we do moves outside of ourselves, the kind of energy. And, um, you know, and it can be damaging if we make wrong choices. So the four sacred beings are always there working with our thoughts and helping us to think more clearly and to make good choices for ourselves. And so we say, let it be that way in our minds. Then we give thanks to the uh, one of the um, people who walked upon the earth who brought us a good message, a message of peace, you know, and, and um, how to behave, how to carry ourselves as, as indigenous people, that we carry the integrity, you know, and that we carry that good mindedness and that we look after our families, that we look after the earth and that we look after, you know, all the things that are, are put here before us by the creator. You know, so we're always working at that to, you know, to be disciplined it helps us to have a disciplined mind, you know, and that's why it's important that we have language because language is what connects us to the earth. It makes us undescribable to anybody because we fit right into the, you know, to the landscape of the place that we say that we're from, the place that we were birthed, the place that was where the creator placed us so that we would have a good life. Um, you know, the foods are all there that we take into our bodies as different nations of people, because not everything that we have in our territory grows in other territories. And so when we think about that and the message that the, we call him Skanidayo, that he brought the message of the good mind, you know, and to, to be able to pass that message on to other people by, you know, sharing, by caring you know, and living that good life, because that's how we were meant to live, you know, with the abundance of food that's been given to us. And, you know, there's many varieties of nut trees out there that give us that good nurturance for our minds to be able to think in a good way. You know, all the trees and all of the animals, everything that I mentioned in this Thanksgiving address was meant to bring us wellness mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So in that collection, you know, we had this man who walked upon the earth and to carry that message to those five Haudenosaunee nations, you know, to bring up that, that goodness and to be a model, you know, for, for other nations to, to follow. Because all of the other nations too have philosophy, they have teachings and they follow those ways and when we put them all together, we build that strength, the strength of believing in ourselves and the things that the creator gave us in order to have this good life. We were given such an abundance, you know, for, for us to, all we had to do was to go out and gather, you know, gather the medicines, gather the food that was out there already growing, you know, because the creator had this great vision to be able to supply us with this, this energy you know, to bring us to that place of the good mind. And so we give thanks to uh, Skanyadayo and we say, let it be that way in our minds. And then last of all, but not the least, is the creator who had the great vision, you know, to think of all of these things to prepare 
the earth so that we would have this good journey as we came to visit here. He gave us a bundle, you know, for us to carry our values and a belief, you know, which shaped our attitudes and our behaviors and gave that to us as we left the sky world, you know, to come and walk this earth walk so that our, our times here would be, you know, difficult at times. But we had our bundle that we looked into in order for us to find that balance. And so we gather those things every day, you know, without thinking. We breathe, you know, we release that breath. We give life. We go to the bathroom. All of those organs are working in a way of that we don't have to call on them and tell them, you know, we got to do this now because they're so activated by the message in the creator and they believed in their responsibility so well and so honored that they they move about in our bodies without really being asked you know so we give thanks for all of that because we're so honored you know that we're so precious to the creator that he provided all of these things for us and so we give thanks and and as I mentioned that, um, you know, I do this every morning and every night before I go to sleep is to give thanks for all of those things. And as I was introducing them, I forgot to tell you that as I mentioned each element that they came in and they grasped your hand and they said, thank you for honoring me today. And they walked around to every individual and they shook their hand and were so grateful that we acknowledged them, you know, and we gave them that, that honor and that respect in, in this moment. So we say, let it be that way in our minds and to always be carrying that thought of how precious we are to the creator. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, thanks for listening. Um, and I hope that, uh, you know, this prayer, this Thanksgiving address to, to acknowledge and validate all of the responsibility of creation, you know, brings, that, brings you to that place in your heart and in your mind, you know, to open up and to hear, you know, uh, and to participate in this earth walk in, you know, in a way of, of great peace, of great gratitude. So now I Miigwech, Norma. All right. Um, just hello, everybody. Um, my name is Lillian Smallboy, and I'm a member of the Moose Cree First Nations, originally from Moose Factory, Ontario, and I now call London, Ontario my home. I am the Implementation Coordinator, Indigenous Liaison at the Center for Research and Education on Violence Against Women and Children at Western University. On behalf of the Learning Network team, welcome to this special event. Considerations for Meaningful Collaboration, a Conversation with Indigenous Elders. I want to acknowledge our work is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, Lenanapuk, and the Kunjuntun Nations. These lands are connected with the London Township and Sombra Treaties of 1796 and the Dish of One Spoon Covenant Wampum. We make this, no, we make this acknowledgement to counter, to counter the doctrine of discovery and recognize indigenous land and sovereignty. We also recognize that many black people were violently displaced to Canada through settler colonialism and slavery. We will continue to work collaboratively with communities to challenge colonialism, anti-black racism, and further forms of oppression that remain pervasive in Canada and that result in disproportionate impacts of gender-based violence on oppressed communities. We are happy to be joined by Elder Norma Jacobs, Norma Jacobs Elder Nalak Ledru, and Elder Gloria Thompson. I will provide a short biography for our speakers and you can find their full biography on the website located in the chat. Elder Norma Japix, Jacobs, sorry about that, is of the Wolf Clan in the Cayuga Nation of the Great Haudenosaunee Confederacy. She is a longhouse faith keeper and the advisor to the National Inquiry on Miss Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, and has taught in university, colleges, and other institutions. 
Elder Nalak Ledru is Inuk and was born and raised in Apex Hill, Nunavut. She has supported the urban Inuit community in Toronto for many years and has been elected to be an Inuit community knowledge keeper. Nalak is also a co-founder of the Head, Head Start program for children in Toronto. She is a member of several communities and councils of universities organizations, which include the University of Toronto and, and McMaster University. Elder Gloria Thompson is a proud Métis woman with roots on the Northwest Manitoba region. She is a, she is a Kairos trained facilitator and has involved in facilitating many Kairos blanket exercise workshops. Gloria is a former Senator for the Métis Nation of Ontario, local council and presently engaged by the Office of the Indigenous Initiatives at Western University as the Métis Elder for Indigenous students. Today's online special event invites individuals and organizations to learn from Indigenous elders on building meaningful collaboration in a respectful and culturally informed manner to support efforts and to end gender-based violence. First Nations, Inuit and Métis leader will, <clears throat> elders will provide guidance on their roles relevant to their communities, including their responsibilities to share and protect Indigenous ways of knowing. Participants are encouraged to engage in their own critical reflection in terms of their intentions and purposes when including elders in their work. Consider asking yourselves, why are we inviting an Indigenous elder? How are we honoring and respecting the knowledge and wisdom of Indigenous elders in our work? How can we create ongoing relationships built on reciprocity within future elder engagements? And the learning objectives from this webinar, for those participating in this webinar, will be able to will be better, better be able to recognize the role of indigenous, indigenous elders, understand indigenous elder engagement processes, acknowledge the need for truth and reconciliation. The format for this special webinar will include a conversation type question and answer session portion, and then conclude with a question and answer period from the audience. And I am very happy to be here and, and, uh, and I really enjoyed um, Norma's uh, Thanksgiving address, miigwech. So we're just gonna let us begin. Um, <clears throat> the first question is I'm going to ask is Nalak is, Tell us about yourself and how you came to this role. And then I will ask Gloria and then Norma. Firstly, I would like to knuckle to Norma. Thank you for reminding us that we are grounded on this earth and that we are able to live each day to our potential of life. And thank you, Lillian, for giving me this opportunity to share my insights and to share what I can today. Um, can you repeat the question? Sure, I can. Tell us about yourself and how you came to this role. <clears throat> Tell you about myself. <laughs> I can go forever on that. <laughs> um, I'm an Inuk, originally, like you said, originally from Apex Hill, and I'm born and raised. And I come from a big family. And the small community that I am originally from, we considered as all families. It didn't matter where, who, or where the person was from. Once you come into that community, we called you family. And everybody was looking up for one another, um, especially taking care of the sick, taking care of the people that who, who needed loving, caring, and nurtured. Um, I, how I became a role into being an elder knowledge keeper 
I was I was one of the oldest uh, in care in Toronto community, Inuit community, and they had asked me to come in and guide them with my knowledge um, of Inuit knowledge. So that that is how I became into this role. Thank you, Lillian. Oh, miigwech, Nalak. Gloria, how, tell us about yourself and how you came to this role. Oh, you're, you're, um, you have to turn on your, uh, Gloria, you have to turn on your, uh, got it. Tanshi Kiawao, Dishnika Shun Gloria Thompson. And what I have just said is in the mate in the Metis or the Michif language, the language of my people was hello, welcome. My name is Gloria Thompson. Um, I grew up in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, my father came from the Northwest, a Metis man who created a definite Metis uh, way of living in our lives. Um, but he did not acknowledge any, I never heard the word Métis when I was growing up and uh, didn't come to know about our roots uh, in the Northwest as an, a distinct people uh, until I was well into my adulthood. So my journey has been um, a little bit, try, um, uh, a bit of a, well, I would call it a journey, because then I, I got involved with the Kairos blanket exercises and learned a lot about First Nations people uh, and the travesty of justice and, and those, those issues. And uh, so I became very involved. And then, of course, on the side, uh, was learning about my Métis roots as well. Um, a few years ago, I uh, was um, I, I took a position with our local Métis Council as the senator. So uh, I don't know if it was because of my wisdom or uh, I'm not really sure, but I, I served four years as the senator, I um, and which is another way of calling us uh, elder. So, um, so I would open and close. I, I attended all the meetings and opened and closed with a prayer, and always, um, always uh, put ten minutes for myself on the agenda, so that I'd have an opportunity to do some teaching. Uh, so, uh, I kind of cut my teeth as an elder at that time. Uh, now, um, because the blanket exercises were not functioning anymore, London created its own teaching and sharing circle called the London Indigenous Teaching and Sharing Circles. Um, so I'm involved with that very much um, as the Métis elder. And uh, we, we have done some really marvelous teaching uh, as a group um, around uh, London and of course we, we open it to uh, surrounding areas as well, but we've been doing it of course on Zoom. You know, um, COVID has deeply affected uh, the, the Kairos blanket exercise, which I continue to believe that it is an excellent teaching tool for non-Indigenous people. Um, so, uh, and I also enjoy being um, uh, at UWO with the Office of Indigenous Initiatives. Um, I have given my, my talk on the history of the Métis people uh, and how they came to evolve as a distinct culture. So that's pretty much, yeah. And I, I certainly want to acknowledge Norma's most beautiful um, Thanksgiving address. It, it was sensationally such a meditation. Norma, thank you so much. And thank you for uh, to Lillian and all of the 
um, people that are involved in putting this on. I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. So Me thank you. Gloria. Me gratis, Gloria. And Norma, could you tell us about a little bit about yourself and how you came into this role, please? Mm. Okay. Um, Gatsunoni Santo, I got a gate one. Skenaji, Ganotanya, Nate, Gatsunoni, Sanguego, Skenaji, I had a niece to Scott Awado named Guanigoha. I just want to give thanks that I'm able to be here today and to um, acknowledge everyone else who um, is in, uh, you know, in this participant practice here and um, that um, you too have have come safely and um, because of your attendance here and um, yeah so I just wanted to um, give thanks for that and that uh, we're here for us to bring our minds together and to be respectful and and caring and kind to to all you know included and uh, so um, my my um, I don't consider myself to be an elder. Um, I don't. Um, um, I don't know about that word. <laughs> um, um, our people, we just, you know, call them older, older people, and an old, the old people. That's how I learned. And um, uh, so, elder is a is a new word for me. Even though I've been around for a long time, but it's it's a word that I've heard often. Um, and um, how I came here is um, I have no idea um, because um, I just um, was so interested in, in um, you know, our ceremonies and, you know, and talking to people. I had a lot of elders that I spoke with and they were my family. Like, um, you know, I worked in a kitchen, I you know, at our longhouse and and, uh, you know, I participated in the ceremonies and my mom was a, a product of the residential school and she never shared too much about language with us or clarified ceremonies. She just told us, um, if you want to know something, go to the longhouse. So I had to go there and listen and I didn't have language. So it was really difficult for me. Um, so I grew up in that kind of environment and um, like participating in ceremonies all the time. And that's how I came to know, um, you know, I talk with lots of elders and get them to explain things to me. And, um, you know, and I, I do speak the language, but I'm not a fluent speaker. Um, actually, when I when I speak, um, usually the people that I'm having conversation with have already moved on to another question by the time I get to organize my words so I can respond. But I do understand five of our six dialects um, that we have. And uh, I attend ceremonies um, all um, pretty much everywhere in our community. And, um, um, you know, all the different longhouses that we have and I learned from going to ceremony. Uh, we have here at Haudenosaunee country, we have between 13 and 17 ceremonies a year. Um, and uh, so I attend all of those. I have a responsibility as a faith keeper um, to know those um, ceremonies and to um, initiate that process, what goes on and what to prepare for the food and um, and have this conversation about working together and sharing and um, uplifting each other in their roles and responsibility, teaching. Um, and I've always been interested in, um, you know, all of the things I've always researched for more information and ask questions and, you know, and trying to understand fully, um, like the whole, the whole situation of, of, um, of this lifelong journey. So, um, you know, I've traveled many places um, across Canada and uh, the United States as well in doing workshops for different universities and colleges, um, different communities. And um, uh, I worked at McMaster. I taught um, courses there at McMaster University. Um, I worked um, in, at UB in, in Buffalo. Uh, I've been in all of these um, universities teaching 
you know, whether it be just a sessional teacher. Um, but um, I I've, I've think I've, I've focused, I've learned a lot about um, traditional knowledge and, um, you know, our lifestyle. And, and I know a lot of history, like what's happened, because it's all included in our, in our ceremonies about the um, effect of colonization. Um, so I've just had all of this extensive work and it just led me into different areas in my life and, um, you know, domestic violence. And, um, you know, I have had firsthand experience about that. And, and I know that it wasn't, um, it's not a, a good thing. And it, and it didn't, um, like that was not part of our role as, as, um, as indigenous people to have violence in our families because of our um, because of our values um, um, and even understanding like the process for colonization. Um, so I've I've had my hand in everything, uh, justice uh, through the women uh, murdered and missing indigenous women, um, and I just. Um, I don't know. I just talk a lot, and, <laughs> and uh, I get called to different places because I guess they think that I know. Um, but I just share the best of my ability, what I know, what I've learned from others, and um, you know. And I think about those things and put it into a perspective for my own learning. So I'm um, like I'm always self-reflecting, and you know, and um, thinking more clearly about these things. I dream a lot, you know, I have powerful dreams. And, um, and so I just um, find myself being included in a lot of these um, um, conferences or um, different activities, different events, um, just um, talking about my experience of growing up in our communities and what it was like and you know, what I learned and, and um, I like to this day, I'm so proud of, of, um, of the things that our people had, you know, the, all of the caretaking, all of the love that was shared um, in our community. And they were just simple things like picking strawberries, you know, or, or preserving fruit, working on a farm, you know, working in a store. Um, they're just all simple things that um, I began working probably when I was in grade four and I've been working ever since, um, you know, to provide for my family and, um, you know, provide a shelter for my family. Um, so I've worked really hard and, um, and uh, you know, I, I, um, I don't, I never drank, I never um, partied like, you um, and I just, I just enjoy um, being who I am, like going to ceremonies and learning. And uh, so I guess that's how I got to be where I am. But I'm really proud that I can work in a university and I work mm -hmm. with PhD students. And, um, you know, I've, I've taught in universities and courses um, with Indigenous knowledge. And, um, you know, I only have a grade nine. And um, but I know lots of lots of things that uh, I've heard stories from elders, you know, older ones in our community. And so I just take those and I think about them and put them in perspective and relate it back to our, our history, relate it back to our ceremonies. And, you know, there's so much information there. And, um, you know, so I just, you know, delve into that because to me, that's really important um, to be who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, now, well. mm, miigwech, Norma. Okay, so our next question is, um, I'm just gonna ask Gloria this next question and then I'll go to uh, Nalak and then to Norma. Um, when is it appropriate for an organization to collaborate with elders? In what in what mean in what ways can meaningful collaboration take place, and how should individuals go about the initial outreach and engagement? Basically, how should when and, and how should uh, organizations reach out? You'd like to start, please, Gloria. Uh -huh. 
No, that's fine. Well, precisely the way you contacted me, Lillian, um, well ahead of the event, um, uh, and describing what it was that you wanted from us, what what the event was going to be about, and a good explanation. Um, you offered me tobacco, which I... I'm sorry. There seems to be some echo, yeah. Interference. Yeah. I'm not sure. All okay. right. I think we're okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, we met together where we could, um, I was having some questions and you were very kind and, uh, and took me out for coffee, offered me tobacco, which I gratefully accepted. And, you know, um, the tobacco um, is a, a, a way of asking uh, uh, Indigenous people for their help, for their um, for their counsel, for their participation. And when I accept that tobacco, I promise you that um, I'm I'm yours for whatever the event is. Uh, and it's a it's like a commitment between uh, you and me. So that um, that was pretty much that that's pretty much the way I li I like to be approached uh, to have plenty of time ahead and to know exactly what my role will be. So I hope that answers your question. Oh, perfect. All right, miigwech. Um, and uh, Nalek, um, basically the same question, like when is it appropriate for, or, an, or for, for your, from your perspective, an organization to collaborate with uh, um, Inuk elders and or in what meaningful way can this collaboration take place and how, how, what's, how do we initially uh, reach out and, to you and, 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 and the engagement? I, I totally agree with Gloria. I mean, a um, little, little ahead of time, that way we, um, we can collect what you need of us and give us time to to think about what what this is about mm. and and to to realize how how we can go forward and um get um uh, get it out there what what you need of us um Yes, a little little ahead of time and the space is great. Thank you. Mm, well much. And uh, Norma, what would how would that that apply to uh, uh, someone reaching out to a First Nations, um, I guess older person from building on what you were mentioning in your when you last shared, and um, and and when would it be appropriate for an organization to reach out to you? You just have to turn your volume back on, the speaker. Okay. Um, I guess um, in um, inclusion, I, th I think that you need to uh, have a relationship, and I think that a relationship should be built um, prior to, um, you know, I, I, like I understand that truth and reconciliation is just like, it opening the door to many events. So um, I think that um, that inclusion and that acknowledgement of, of the importance of Indigenous voice is important, uh, you know, in all um, events and any, um, you know, activity that's happening that the Indigenous voice should always be consulted um, because it is our land, it is our country. And that, um, you know, to have that, um, I guess the respect for their voice because it hasn't been heard for so long mm -hmm. or hasn't been validated for so long. And I think that relationship building needs to happen, you know, on a regular basis um, uh, because we know of them in our communities, you know, that we know that our people are everywhere. 
and that um, you know it's their concerns, it's their needs that need to be addressed. Um, so um, you know, asking for advice or for their inclusion into the whatever development they're working on um, should always be, you know, the indigenous people should always be there. Um, it's a it's a you know a show of respect, um, and it's um, you know including them in the process because it is our our people that they're servicing, and they need to know about our perspective. They need to know about our history. They need to know about our feelings. They need to know everything about us, which they don't. So I think that more awareness and. Um, you know, building those relationships with community people is really important. And I know that um, in one of our um, ceremonies, it's always like standing outside of the door and saying, where do I turn? You know, who do I ask and what direction do I go to find that? You know, so um, it's a simple task of, of invitation. You know, we'd like to have your voice and uh, because We'd appreciate hearing, you know, from you and um, that whole discussion of, of um, you know, knowledge uh, sharing is, is really valuable, you know, to come to be in relationship with um, and walk together on this journey, you know, to reconciliation. Thank you, Sharma. And um, um, Nolak, I'm just going to ask you an, another question. Um, what are one to two things that you would want folks to know about, about the role of an elder? Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, Norma had mentioned that, you know, it's, you know, about reconciliation and, and, and all these, kind, you know, um, and obviously collaborations. But I'm just wondering, from your, from your perspective, what's some of the important things that you would want somebody, um, our audience or our participants to know about? your role as a, an elder? Um, or if you wanted to share an experience of, of your role as an elder, like what do you value most about your role or, or what you want um, our participants to know most about your role? My role is to let people understand where we where we actually come from and what what it, it had impact on us mm. and how how we can um, try and share uh, how 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 to go forward with this. Um, I have seen in, in my experience, and I myself have been um, survival of these things, and I, I, don't, I was um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, these are difficult. These are a little difficult to um, come forward. Kind of, um, as for me, I had I had a lot of difficulty to go to a person and trust their and get their trust, so I can talk about what had happened to me. Hmm. And but how can we? find uh, find a good listener that they um, that they can get trusted by the person that who comes forward mm. um, we we need to we need to look at the people that who has been hurt so many times and we need to and how to how to help them and which and which way we can help them is it physically is it emotionally is it spiritually 
all these like how how can we how can we um help a person when when so many times that um that person repeatedly had been hurt but as as for me i i always kind of let my let the let the people that who comes to me i always let them know that they can kind of they can tell me whatever they want and they can keep what is hurting them inside for time being but come to me when they are ready to share what what is hurting them I hope that answers your question. Thank you. It does. It does. Thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech. No luck. Um, and Norma, um, the same question. What um, what are thing, two things that you would want folks to know about the role of an elder? Or maybe some of your experiences on your role as an elder? Uh, or not an elder. Uh, I'm sorry, older person. <laughs> <Trying it. laughs> Um, I think just following um, um, Nalak's um, words um, is to build that trust um, because of, of um, past history. Um, and that, um, I think that um, having a conversation, you know, and really understanding, coming to that place of understanding and having that compassion um, you know, I, I think it's really important because um, I know that uh, when I went to work in one of the universities that um, um, the head of the department asked me who was non-Indigenous, um, like what I um, did, it, did we have a social structure? And I said, yes. And I went through and I explained everything about our, our clans and our protocols and everything. And um and he, when he invited me to lunch, and so I was talking and he was asking me the questions and he was eating and I wasn't eating because I was answering his questions. And so I got finished and um, he said to me, he said, oh, you haven't even touched your food yet. And I said, well, I've been answering all your questions. And I said, um, and he said, um, well, after listening to you, he said, um, you have to admit that we brought you something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> because he never heard a word of what I had said, never to internalize because he was too busy eating, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he never paid any attention to any of the things that I mentioned, you know, um, what we had, well, isn't that wonderful? I didn't know that, you know, he could have at, at least acknowledged that, but he didn't, he just said, we, well, you have to admit we we brought something that's valuable to you. So I think really understanding, you know, and, and you can only come to an understanding by having conversation, you know, and asking questions of one another to be clear in in uh, you know what what's uh, where are we going with this? You know, we're you know we should be establishing relationship. Because that's, you know, the Thanksgiving address was all about relationship building and honoring and respecting. You know, and they all come with a gift. We all come with a gift. And so when we're, you know, having conversation and, and, and they want us to be a part of it, then they need to listen and understand completely about what we're, where we're coming from and the things that we've been through. And... Um, and they need to make peace with that, you know, and it might not have been them, but it's the ancestors and it was our ancestors too that were hurt so terribly. So I think that we need to understand our history um, and we need to be able to reflect on our creation stories, not only mine, but theirs as well. And we need to bring those forward, you know, about, um, really living in those ways of, of, of relationship building. And I bring that up because I think that, you know, in our community as Haudenosaunee people that we have um, the Tura Wampum, 
which talks about our treaty that we made with um, the Dutch in the early early times coming together, you know, that we wouldn't interfere in each other's business, but we could meet in the sacred space and to have conversation, to come clear. And if there was something that was going to be beneficial to me, um, then perhaps I could use it, but with permission. And if there was something that they wanted, that they liked, that they could use, they had to ask permission. And they had to, you know, come through ceremony in order to validate that. So I think that, you know, all of these things are, are really valid and important to, to our people as Indigenous people that uh, you know those spaces of our sacred space where we meet over the sacred fire you know to have these conversations is to be inclusive you know and to be understanding and to be truthful you know because i think that's what the two row represents and um i think that you know there's been a lot of misunderstandings in um in historical context, you know, about who we are as, as Indigenous people. And a lot of, um, um, like, um, labeling, you know, and, um, and none of those labels are true. You know, we've learned, we've learned well from the outside because of the pressures that were put on our people. So I think, um, you know, we have to have that compassion. And we learn that through conversation of understanding, you know, and really understanding another person and what they've endured, what their life was like, you know, and, and that um, we don't have a right to interfere like in, in other people's business. That's, that's how our indigenous people thought. You know, this was our community, this is our language, this is how we run things. And if we wanted to enter in those communities that we would have to knock on the door and ask permission to come in. But we did it with respect. And so, um, you know, and I wouldn't come into someone's house and say, you gotta do it this way, or I don't like that furniture. I don't like how you got your home arranged. I don't know, I don't like how you cook or, you know, we don't have a right to do that. You know, that's why we ask permission to come in and we follow the laws of that place, the rules that they have, because we're a visitor. So I think, you know, um, a lot of um, communication has to happen, you know, to really come to an understanding and to have that compassion for one another you know, to create this balance that we need, you know, that was here in the beginning. Um, and, um, you know, it's been completely in turmoil. You know, we've had so many issues in regards to um, Indigenous knowledge, you know, and its place. Like I think Indigenous knowledge is, is very beneficial because it's honest, because it's, um, um, you know, it's, um, it doesn't do damage. It's always considering, you know, the well-being of, of people, of the earth, of the water, of the land, of, of the air, you know. So I think that, um, you know, that, um, that conversation is really important in building relationships. And uh, uh, just to mention um, that I wrote a book that it's called Ondagahodes, and it means coming to that place of compassion. Hmm. So, and it relates to all aspects of our life, like injustice and, um, you know, in um, violence. Um, it's inclusive of all of those systems that, um, you know, that, that comes from the non-Indigenous world hmm. and how it's affected our people. So, um, yeah, so that was a long story. <laughs> no, no, I can do it. I can do it. Oh. It's important. It's important. <laughs>
Oh. And we need to really understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think that we'll just have time for one more one more round of questions, and then at, uh, then we'll do some question uh, answer. I mean, some questions from the audience. And I think we'll start with you. Yeah, we'll start with you, uh, Elder Gloria. Um, and the question is: What values and protocols do community-based organizations need to know when working with Métis elders? What kind of you know values and protocols and or different kinds of things that are particular to in um maybe about maybe sharing maybe or maybe just sharing us a bit about Métis elders and and and, and your experiences in that sense. Well, um, I have a whole page oh. of what the senator's <laughs> responsibilities are, um, and you know I think. Um, the, the most important ones to me as the senator <clears throat> and things that I had to learn um, was to be the peacemaker on mm -hmm. the council, um, to be unbiased and respectful. So these are, you know, uh, kind and honest. These are like the grandfather teachings mm -hmm. of Indigenous people. Um, I was, you know, I needed to open and close the meetings with a prayer. Uh, and at functions, I was asked to pray. So I always tried to pray um, in, in a pertinent way. Uh, certainly nothing like the Thanksgiving address that Elder Norma gave us. But so I... I would try to include, like if I were to pray for us here, I would try to include um, everybody that was present to open their hearts and um, be of good mind. And also to acknowledge the water, the earth, the, the gifts of Mother Earth and, 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 and the gratitude. The gratitude uh, is really important. Um, other than that, I, I, I don't think, um, I don't think they're, you know, they, they encourage us to seek out if one of us is in trouble. Um, but you know, here it's a, it's a kind of a different situation. Um, I think, uh, now Lock would, uh, would appreciate not being in your in your clan, not being in your uh, in your milieu. So here, the Métis are really very spread out, mm. uh, and we worked very hard to gather what Métis were here to create the community, to create the relationship that mm. Elder Norma um, so beautifully communicated uh, to to be present for each other. And um, so it, uh, it's a little bit different in that way. Um, I'm sure there are older Métis people that are considered elders that, um, you know, if you know them better than you know me, they would, you would go there. An elder is, you know, um, I think I reflect on when you ask me how I became an elder, and I said it's because I'm old. <laughs> and that's pretty much <laughs> the answer. Uh, so, so to think that it's that there's anything strictly matey about um, as as a as a functioning elder in the community now. Um, when I'm going to be a knowledge keeper for, uh, um, you know, we, we have uh, the London Indigenous and Teaching Sharing Circles hold uh, videos for uh, non-Indigenous people to attend. And one of them uh, is the Doctrine of Discovery, Stolen Hands, Stolen, stolen Lands, Stolen Hearts. And the other one is they came for the children. And these two videos we watch on Zoom. And I'm, uh, I'm, the, the, 
I'm the indigenous presence, okay? So what Norma was talking about was having an indigenous person present so mm -hmm. that that whatever we're doing, whatever we're learning together, the relationship <laughs> has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I feel very close to um, some of these groups that I have encountered again and again, watching these videos and, and, and they're tough, they're truth. Mm -hmm. And it's all going toward telling the truth of what happened and what is happening um, and, and developing relationships so that we move forward together. This, this, is, this is my vision of, uh, and why I do what I do. So awesome. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. You I that I was perfect. Thank you. Miigwech, Gloria. Okay. Gloria. Um, Nolak, um, so um, basically the same question again. I'm just, you know, as, as, a, as the um, Inuk elder here, um, is there any um, specific protocols or things or that organizations should know about? Or is there anything that um, we haven't, that, I, you know, obviously I've asked you some questions, but is there anything that you want to add in, um, that, I, that, you, that you feel like you want to share at this time? <clears throat> yes, I I would like to add is um, we are we are here to to um, live together to to um, um, share share what we need from each other, like some people are, are not, are not happy that, um, for example, for non indigenous um, if I were to teach them how, how my way of life, right, and, and they'd start living my way of life, and we're like to me to me um is to kind of well in other people's eyes they they would probably consider me as a traitor but to me what i'm teaching that person is how to live how to live life, how to share my knowledge to other other non-indigenous persons too, mm -hmm. and to respect uh, we, our ways of life. But if they're going to um, um, kind of share share my experience with them and make money off of that, like no, that's that's not why I'm. I'm I'm teaching you our ways. I'm teaching you our ways so you can teach other non-indigenous to to how we had it hard, struggling in life. Mm. And yet and yet some people do um um make money out, out of our struggles, right? And and, and then here we are, we are just, uh, we are just saying, hey, did I, did I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. And well, at that present time, I don't think I was making a mistake. I thought I was helping another human being of how to survive and yet they're still kind of, instead of, um, um, <clears throat> instead of sharing what I had shared with them, but they're profit, profiting, profiting from them instead. Mm -hmm. And like, if I was, if I was a shellfish, I would, I would not share whatever. Um, 
I think I would just let these people die. <laughs> but that is not our culture. Hmm. Our culture is to help one another, to love one another, to respect one another and have patience with other people. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Me, me glad. Yes, it does. Thank you, Chanak. Um, and Norma, I was just wondering, um, just um, is there anything you'd like to add at this point? And and um, you know, we're just gonna um, I'm just gonna ask you one more, and then I'll I'll get to Gloria to add anything if they want that you haven't. Have you wanted to share at this point um, before we go to the question and answer uh, phase from audience? Um. I think um, just the fact that, um, you know, this process for truth mm -hmm. and reconciliation is so important um, because of the the times that we live in now and the disasters that are happening and, you know, the violence that exists. And, um, you know, that's not the life I don't think that the creator had planned for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, wherever this um, was... Um, introduced and I think that people really need to delve into a lot of um, their own beings to find out you know and to ask for help for um, you know understanding what's happening in the world today um, because we are not in a good place um, our whole our mother earth is um, suffering um, she's very sick and uh, you know she's um, She's um, rebelling against, um, you know, the treatment of her body. And um, I think that, um, you know, we, we all need to take the time just to understand who we are as a people, you know, not only Indigenous, but um, non-Indigenous people, you know, and to look at, um, you know, their creation stories and to, you know, to understand their philosophy of what life was supposed to be like, because you know, if, if the creator is, is one to all of us, then, you know, we should all have this concern for each other to love one another and to help share and bring everyone up to the level of, um, you know, that we're all equal. Um, so I think that, um, you know, this process um, of inclusion, you know, is, is really important um, and honoring those relationships because we have these people offered so much to this to this life. You know, we've been working uh, diligently to preserve our lands and um, you know take care of the water and the air, and uh, but we keep being overwhelmed by the processes of um, you know uh, modernization, um, excavations, and surgeries against our mother, you know, without her permission. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. And, um, you know, that's what I, that's how I look at, um, you know, the teachings that I've been given and that I understand is that, um, you know, uh, this earth was created for all of us to enjoy and to have this experience of good life here because everything was provided for us. You know, the, um, you know, the different fruits, the different vegetables, you know, we can just go into the woods and, and to get a meal because of the vegetation that grows there. You know, the mushrooms, there's so leeks and, you know, garlic, everything. And our plants, you know, are still giving to us and the trees are still giving us sap. You know, so I think that, you know, taking the time to really reflect on how far we're away from the balance of, of a good life. So I, I just um, would like to add that and, um, you know, just um, for people to think about that, you know, and to go within instead of looking without. Mm. Thank you. Now, I'm um, much, Norma. And uh, Gloria, is there anything else you'd like to add? And it and, uh, doesn't have to be regarding questions. It's just something that you'd like to add. Well, I just noticed something in the chat. Someone requested the links for the two movies that I mentioned. And I've sent okay. um, 
I've sent an email to uh, Jasmine just to ask her if she could include them, but I there's so much in the chat right now. I don't know if it would. Um, but we'll 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 work that out. Yes. Uh, I also noticed um, someone mentioned tobacco as a gift of gratitude. Uh, that's not what the tobacco is about. I tried to explain that it's a um, it's an agreement. It's a uh, yeah. That is not the the uh, the thank you. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. So and you can you can find out about you know how to present tobacco. It, it, there's a lot online that uh, that you can look and see and learn because. Because we all need to learn. We all need to learn. And uh, there's nothing wrong with with searching it out. You can ask the elders. <laughs> I'm sure we'd be happy to. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I, um, I don't know if there are any other questions about engaging. Uh, we, we've talked about engaging with, and I, I'm hoping that we got that uh, message about listening, respecting, and compassion uh, to create relationship before you go any further. I think that's mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's, there's the whole protocol uh, and different, different groups have different protocols to uh, engage an Indigenous person. So mm -hmm. I think that's all I needed to say. <laughs> and I um, I, I, I'm so filled with gratitude from uh, the two uh, elders that I've met today and heard their wisdom. Thank you so, so much. Miigwech, everybody. And okay, so um, I have a whole bunch of questions here and, and from, from the audience. And Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Nalak, did you want to say something? Hey, I'm sorry. Um, Thank you. I would like to answer one of the oh, um, questions here. Yes. Anonymous attendee. I'm curious to know more about what life was like prior to colonization. I have, I have um, to me, what life was before colonization was freedom. Life, love, um, kind of. Be, we um, we we have quotas back home now to to hunt, but we can hunt, and mm. and way back then, before colonized, uh, we hunted only what we needed. Uh, we follow seasons, and mm -hmm. we we hunted what we needed for that season, and for for um for our kind of for our winters. We have to think in the future for our winters, so we can survive our winters. So everything like okay. When we got colonized, we got into one place. Uh, but before before colonizations, Inuit were scattered, and and they they had freedom of uh, of to go visiting one one camp or another, and kind of come across. Um, they they would actually pick a place to to um to celebrate the coming of the sun. Mm. The spring is here, and new life is coming in that spring, and that's what we had celebrated during during. Well, we still celebrated this um in in. In my community, it's called Tunic Time Festival, and to gather people together and share share our experiences, 
um, during our lives. And I hope that answers your question there, Anonymous. <laughs> Oh, me uh, No, like I just have a question that specifically asked the one of the audience um, asked is asking wanted to ask you, uh, Nalak is um, um, like um, when, um, Gloria had mentioned that uh, tobacco as 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 a way to um, um, in approaching a, a an, you know Métis elder and then you know a lot of we you know a lot of us know that for, you know First First Nations not all First Nations elders want tobacco or specifically but you know that's some sort of seems to be what you know is known but if i were to come and approach you you know as an elder i mean as as someone to what would i offer you as as you know obviously we know it's not that's not the that's not the the it's an agreement we we, we you know we understand that is there something that would be specific for an in uh in nook elder yes um what what I kind of okay, maybe fruit of of one's choice. What the who the person you're giving it to, okay. or maybe teas, yeah, um, some kind of a tea, and mm -hmm. what what they like to work with their hands, such as oh, okay. beads, yeah or pieces of seal skin that they can work with mm. something that uh you can you can provide them mm. for their crafts yeah. and i know that that alone to me would uh okay if you were present you were presenting me um beads then i would make myself pairs pair of earrings that i can use or give it to you as a gift okay. and that's that's what i'd like <laughs> and also vegetable oil for my seal lamp my my seal oil lamp yes yes like or 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 milkweed to burn my to burn my seal. Mm. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Much. That's wonderful. Um, I guess uh, and so I'll go to some of these questions here today. Okay. Um okay, so can you um, um, please talk about this, uh, the difference between um, um, knowledge keeper and an elder? Um, and, the, and there's, you know, and there's, and there's obviously, there's, a, you know, and a senator, maybe, you know, Gloria, and just because I, like we, um, a lot of, I, I think a lot of people want to, are, are want to learn about these, you know, and, the, and there's obviously the different kinds of, of, of um, terminologies that, you know, that, that seem to be around so are you asking me that question yeah uh, yes, yes yeah yes. okay well uh, um the metis uh organization is quite um i would say british based in the sense that you know we have a president and a secretary and a da 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 da, da down the line and a senator mm -hmm. so the senator, as I explained before, really plays the role of an elder. Uh, the only difference is that they are seated on council. But gosh, we have elders in our community that aren't voted in as senators. It doesn't have to be that way. That's kind of a political thing uh, to be a senator. Um, whereas uh, now I'm, I'm no longer a senator, but that doesn't mean I'm not an elder because I'm old and I've learned and I have things to share and I have things I want you to know about the Métis people. So, uh, and I want to know about you. So that's really, uh, I, I hope that explains it. Yes. The three of us 
come from such various different backgrounds, uh, but we're all doing similar things um, mm -hmm. to be present to our communities. So, uh, you know, you just mm -hmm. find you find out I'm not the only elder in this Métis <laughs> community for yeah. sure. Very good. Yeah. Um, I guess I have a question for, for Norma. Um, what, ad, um, what advice do you have for our youth to survive in today's world on and off reserve? Um, I think um, that language is really important and understanding like from the community you come from for ceremony. Um, I think those are really important things to have and to celebrate um, because it, it was our connection to the land. It's um, honoring the land, it's uh, honoring everything that on creation. So I think when we acknowledge those things that our mother is very pleased and, um, you know, she wants to work harder to um, supply those things for, for the people. And I think that's, uh, you know, all of the medicines, the fruits and, you know, the animals, the birds, everything. Um, that's why they're there. And uh, we have to acknowledge them for it to um, have them still come and be a part of our life, to be inclusive and, um, you know, to engage them in our, in our recognitions and our validations for their existence still, you know, because they go through a lot to... Um, you know, through all of those these um, things that are present today, like the toxins and, um, you know, all mm -hmm. of the impurities that are in the water, everything. So I think it's really important that we, uh, you know, to acknowledge um, all of these gifts, um, whether we're, um, you know, in the, in the cities or we're in our own community, um, that those, that Thanksgiving of prayer is so powerful you know, to bring us together because it's a reminder for us to um, acknowledge, you know, our beginnings um, and to carry those things forward because that's where we get our pride from. That's where we get our gratitude. Um, and, um, you know, uh, we've, so, we've been so far removed from our cultures and our languages, um, you know, and people are struggling today for identity. Mm. Oh, and um, mm. it's really hard to find those roots, you know, because there's mm. so many years, centuries gone by, you know, that people have forgotten about who they originally were, where they belong, uh, where's their territory, what's, what's the language that was spoken there, because every territory has, you know, probably about five different dialects of, of language. You know, so it's hard to to return back to all of that, but there are some possibilities. Um, but and I think that's why uh, the mother's line was so important, the mother's bloodline, because we're matrilineal, um, is that we follow the mother's line because then we can trace our roots back to our very beginnings. You know, so um, identity I think is is um, really an issue right now. Um, a lot of people are looking for, you know, where they come from and who am I, you know, and how do I, why do I feel this way or, you know, how do I reconnect, you know, because the processes for government was, um, you know, to divide and conquer. And so, you know, through the doctrine of discovery, um, you know, to move people away from their territories and from their families and and, uh, you know, to put us all into a melting pot of, of losing our identity, which we're at, at at this moment, you know, so identity and, um, you know, and having that language and attending ceremony, I think, is, is really, they're all tied together because once you know your language and you can follow that history and you know your culture, you know, and you know your clan, if you have a clan, you know, to be able to follow those roots to back to finding who you are, where you belong. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's so, um, I, like I've just been um, 
um, involved in a lot of um, that search for, um, you know, families, I belong here, or, you know, people who have grown up in the cities because of the removal and uh, enfranchisement of people um, that they've had to move into the cities over time. And, you know, they lost all the contact with their families. So that identity is, is um, a really stronghold in now. Uh, you know, in our communities, because we need those people in order to have that strong foundation to uphold our values and our belief system and to build those attitudes and those behaviors. Thank you, Sharon. And I guess uh, we have some time yeah. for um, just uh, probably one more question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'm sorry. I just I when 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 one of you're speaking, I like to really listen to, and so I just have to go through the just uh, to read the question here. Um, okay, I have a question here, and and um, just if anybody would like to answer that, I'm just going to open it up to anybody who would like to answer this question. Um, the question is: If a group wants to include an elder in their work. What is a reasonable expectation of an elder? Should we be asking them to attend all our meetings or, or events? And is this reasonable? I guess what level of engagement I, um, um, seems to be the kind of question that they're, they're asking. Would anybody like to start answer that one? Or maybe share your experience in, in have, have you ever been part of that, that experience? I think um, Lily and I'll um, add some words to that. Sure. Um, I think that, um, you know, in um, like coming together in an organization or calling on meetings, um, yeah. that not everybody attends every time, you know, and I think that once they have the information of what they're leaning towards or what their plans are for the activity or the event that they're planning, um, that once they get the information and they, you know, study that, they can, you know, provide input back to that. But I know uh, because I've been on several organizations that um, not everybody attends every time, you know, and, um, you know, why would it be any different for elders? You know, it's, um, we're trying to create a balance here. So, um, you know, there's, you know, we never know when people get sick or if they have an appointment or, you know, but, you know, as long as they have the information and they can respond to that in some way, whether they call or, you know, um, come on a computer or, you know, if they have those skills to, to be engaged in that, in that way. But I don't think that there's, there's one person that can say I'm there all the time for the meetings or, the gatherings, you know, because we, we're, we're human beings, you know, we have things that come up in our life that we can't always be present. Awesome. Hey, Batch, Norma. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, um, yes, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> May I respond to that yeah, as well? Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought you okay. said, I thought you heard me say, right. say yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Norma. Um, I'm, I don't think I've ever been to an organizational meeting as such that are just meeting for, because they meet once a week or once a month. The, the meetings that I attend are st strictly about truth and reconciliation uh, initiatives put on by the churches or different organizations um, that want their staff to, um, to hear the truth, to be, uh, to make them aware of uh, of the issues at hand. So that that I can't really say that I have experience in in doing uh, anything else, but to be the indigenous presence, to lead the teaching and sharing circle after the viewing of the movie uh, or the video, and to let. Every, everybody in the circle because we are all equal mm -hmm. let everybody in the circle have a word to say 
uh, if they so choose. So uh, I think it's a very valid way uh, of engaging your staff um, to uh, have an Indigenous person present. Um, and uh, it, I don't know if any of you remember <laughs> the blanket exercise, which several uh, organizations came forward and, in, and included their staff uh, or try to include as many staff as possible to learn uh, and to hear the teaching. So um, I, I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, Nalak, is there anything you'd like to add to that question? I'm sorry. I'll pass the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just, um, the question was just um, talking about um, elder engagement and, and uh, yeah, what's, what, uh, you know, specific and, and how many, like, the, the level of engagement, I guess, the, the audience was asking, you know, how elders, you know, what kind of level of engagements, you know, do they want the elders at every meeting? You know, do you, is that something that, you know, what's your experience in, in those kinds of well, in situations. organizations, yeah. um, uh, yes, to 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 share uh, what what they are expecting of you, mm. and usually, <laughs> usually I I share a little bit more than what I I am expected of them. <laughs> I kind of expected of me to them and to to acknowledge um, what what the core of the meeting is like some some people would like to stray from the original the original thing so I don't know maybe I would. Uh, Maybe I would a answer to kind of answer what they didn't like, and then they sidetrack <laughs> um, what it is about. So, <laughs> kind of, you, you, you asked me to come to this meeting, and yes, of course, I'm going to give you my mind, and I hope that and I hope that you realize you really realize that it comes from my heart mm. and <laughs> kind of if if you don't if you don't uh, learn or take my advice good for you that's your problem <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nalak. Okay, so we have like uh, ten more minutes before the um, the end of this webinar. Um, I just wanted to. Um, there was just one question that I thought that was. I think this one. This one pertains to the the um, Thanksgiving address, and I thought that was interesting. Um, they wanted to know was, can you explain the four sacred beings further a little bit, Norma? If you don't mind, please. Well, there are connection between the creator and the people. So they're um, like, you know, if you have a telephone line and that they, they are the secretary or the receptionist that carries the messages from the creator to the human beings or the human beings to the creator. So they're kind of like, um, yeah, a receptionist and they're what they have their responsibility to, to be able to help us to think clearly, um, to make good decisions. You know, they're always, you know, when you have a thought, maybe I should do this and then you don't do it. And then that thought keeps coming back to you. Well, once you get it done, then it gets out of your mind. So they're always like, they're encouraging you to, to, 
you know, get this done because this is what's standing in your way to move, move ahead, to make change is because you're always just thinking about it. You're not taking action for it. So they're, they're kind of there to be like, um, be innovative, innovative, you know, to um, encourage you, to support you, you know, and to get you to think about things before you make decisions. Thank you much. Okay, I think that um, that, was, that was the last question. Um, before, I just wanted to um, give you uh, um, each one of you an opportunity to, if there's something you want to say before we end our app webinar that you that maybe you haven't had an opportunity to say if you want to take that time now and we'll just start with um i guess we'll just uh, start with you norma okay um i think i just wanted to add about the tobacco um because tobacco was an indigenous plant and it was our our way and it was a plant that came from the creator that was how we did our prayers and the smoke from the tobacco rose up to the creator when we're, when we're using uh, tobacco, when we're asking for help. And I think that every um, community or every nation has their own way, their own gift of offering. Um, like I know that there's um, um, myrrh, um, and there's other kind of plants or um, elements that, that um, they honor in those other countries. So I don't think that if they're immigrants or non-Indigenous people, that they should be offering tobacco to us because it's not their, it's not their um, gift. Mm. Their gift comes from where the land that they come from. They have protocols and they have procedures on how to ask for help. Uh, and that's what they should be presenting is a gift from them, not, not using our tobacco and offering tobacco to our own people because that's our own, that's our own um, gift that we grow. And it's sacred to us. So not everyone should be able to offer our sacred gift to ourselves, you know, to us. So they have, um, they have something like um, when they talk about myrrh um, and there's a lot of other, um, some people use basil or, you know, there's many plants out there that, that people have from their own country and they have that as sacred, it's supposed to be sacred to them. And that's what you're offering as a sacred gift to ask for help. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And, um, and I just think that it's really um, um, great that um, this webinar is being offered because there's so much knowledge exchange that needs to happen in order for us to come to an understanding or that place of um, on the Gaho dance where we have that conversation and come to a real understanding of who we are and how we're to build this relationship, you know, in, in this country. Um, and, um, you know, we're a valid people, you know, we have knowledge um, and, um, you know, and our, some of our knowledge has been used in all processes like medicine um, and it's never been um, acknowledged as, as a gift from the indigenous people or that they have it first and we, you know, they just changed it, changed it up a little bit. So we need to have that, you know, to have that recognition um, because we are a people, you know, who have this um, gratitude for the earth that we walk upon, you know, and, um, so I think that, you know, that acknowledgement and, and what we've, um, um, you know, offered to, to help because that was our way was to introduce people to what we had, you know, when they came into this country. <clears throat> it was negated, you know, it wasn't 
beneficial. There was no need to acknowledge indigenous people because of the labeling that they had for us. I think that's really part of um, the reconciliation, you know, um, and to, you know, what's wrong with speaking our truth? You know, I think that, you know, we've had um, so many conflicts um, because we're trying to protect our land, trying to protect our water, you know, our territories that are sacred to us. And we get labeled as being terrorist in our own country. You know, and I think those kind of thoughts have to change. And, you know, it's, um, it's just things that we've been taught over time, you know, to create this conflict and this agitation amongst people when we're all the same. Like I have, I have all kinds of people that I work with, you know, and they talk about the values that they, that, you know, that they carry in their culture. But it's nowhere that we talk about those values to say, oh, yeah, we can have that too. You know, to find the, the, the likeness in, in all of our nations of people. So we need to begin that conversation and, um, you know, to really um, become interested and become engaged in each other's life, but to respect our boundaries as well. Thank you very much, Norma. Um, and um, Nolak, is there anything you'd like to uh, close with? Say anything? Yes, I would like to answer um, Anonymous again. Um, is payment in dollars appropriate? Well, yes, it is also appropriate because we do have to pay our bills and if you would rather offer a land or a car i would i would totally accept that too <laughs> thank you <laughs> gotcha. um gloria is there anything you'd like to uh, conclude with oh you have your um you have your uh yeah. Are yeah. we talking about honorariums? Yeah, um, we're just closing up and whatever you want to close with. And if you okay. want to finish because with honorariums, that's quite I a right think, uh, Yeah, that many people don't realize that uh, when we're invited to attend a meeting or an, um, an event or a ceremony, uh, that, that um, there's, there's a remuneration involved. Now, that has nothing to do with the gift to 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 uh, what I was talking about tobacco and what Norma said about tobacco, I'm fascinated because um, I was thinking about what uh, Nalak said as well about uh, she would like a fruit or you know something different. Well, gosh, I, I wouldn't mind a venison steak because mm -hmm. that's what I was brought up on and I. It's been so long, <laughs> just so, but I, I don't mean to be facetious about the tobacco, yeah. but I know that tobacco is a sacred plant that Norma, you would use it regularly. So I'm giving you something that you can use uh, to put down uh, as a gift to mother earth and all the ways that you would use your tobacco. So I don't understand why that wouldn't be an appropriate way to engage you by giving you something, you know what I mean? Uh, that that was, has always been my thought about tobacco. Well, it is, a, it's an honorable gift, but I'm just saying that it's amongst indigenous people. That's our gift to one another because we understand what tobacco is about. Right. But when other people in other countries come here, it's not appropriate that they offer us tobacco. It's just like if we do a land acknowledgement, why would I do a land acknowledgement exactly. for my country? Yeah. You know, no. and, and no. other people no. should be doing a land acknowledgement, not me. Well, I think you would. 
that's just think, what I'm trying to say is that the tobacco is, is a sacred medicine to all indigenous people. And that mm. people from outside shouldn't be offering our own gift to ourselves, to us, because okay. it doesn't belong to them. Mm. Do you know what well, I mean? You've, uh, yeah, you've, off, you've mm. offered a lot of food for thought for me, for sure. I had never looked at it that way. Thank you so much. And mm. I see you have a, a I just belt. wanted to show you my book. Oh, what okay. It, oh. The book, right, right. And where can and um, where can that is that being sold in store? Or like where can if yeah, somebody you, can, can, you can order it from Amazon or okay. any bookstore. Oh, um, okay. great. And what's the name of it again? It's um, uh, on the Gaho desk. Okay. And it means coming to a place of compassion and understanding. Oh, wow. Oh, definitely wow. a good read for sure. It's got the two rows. On the top. Oh yes. yes. Oh wow. That yes. is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, okay, I think that we're coming to a close. It's three it's three o'clock. I um, think oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Now, uh, now that's I have key. one more. I have um I want to comment on Norma and Gloria. Sure. Um about tobacco. Like okay. There's a lot of assumption, mm. like when you approach an, an uh, Aboriginal elder, you assume that you are entitled to give them tobacco for a gift. But if you want to kind of, yes, that's appropriate if you don't know what to give them, but you you make arrangement to meet them then before you you meet them why don't you ask them what would be appropriate for them to get yeah. right yeah yeah <laughs> thank you awesome thank you much okay i'd like to say um um, miigwech to all, all of you, Gloria, Norma, Nalak, um, for this experience and for coming here and, 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 and um, sharing with us your, your knowledge and your wisdom and, and, and your, value, your valuable time and taking time spending with us. Um, it has been a pleasure and an honor to get to know all three of you today and, and to be able to do this experience and, and for, uh, for, um, for our organization and miigwech for your time. You are so welcome. Right. Bye.